Okay, sorry about that, folks. I started going through the syllabus before I turned on uh, Screencast-O-Matic, which is what records it that I put on YouTube. So, I don't have YouTube set up yet, but hopefully we'll see. This is fall, I mean, not fall, this is spring 2017. I'll get this updated, and what I'll give you here will be mini term one, but then I'll tell you what happens mini term two. It is uh, Math 238, apply differential equations one, three credit hour course. Uh, the dates and time are wrong here. Here's what they are Monday, Wednesday, 2 to 3.15. A2255, that's correct. A building, that's correct. Customer campus, that's correct. Okay. Now, my name is Charles Fowler. Um, contact policy. Okay. Email. cfowler.edu. I think all of you probably know that. You've been in my class before. My phone number here on the Bessemer campus. This is a change. The phone number is the same on the Bessemer campus. However, this number no longer works on Birmingham. Last term it did up until December, and they hired someone to be the grant coordinator for the NASA grant coordinator, and she's part-time, and she come, only comes sometime between Monday and Thursday. She's not usually there on Friday, and I use the office on Friday, but she needed her own telephone numbers for making phone calls and stuff like that. So they gave her a new number, and they couldn't have two phones in there, so... I'll have to get that number for my Friday number. I don't know it yet. When I was over there, no one else knew it either, so they were trying to determine that. And the person who knew it wasn't in that day, so we'll find that out. Okay. And I think I told you before, right now I'm behind in emails. Hopefully, maybe Friday or so, I'll start catching up on those. We're still trying to sort out the schedules and that kind of stuff. Okay. Please don't leave phone messages, okay? I'm so far behind, I don't know if I'll ever get all those cleared. Call only during my office hours, and I'll tell you my office hours in a minute. Uh, and uh, if you don't catch me during those office hours, hang up and call back in five or ten minutes later. More than likely, I'll just out in the hall, okay, or somewhere. Okay. So here's what my office hours are. These are not necessarily true. I'll tell you what they are. Monday and Wednesday, I do have an 8 o'clock class. I thought maybe it would be canceled, but it wasn't, so it's still made. I do have a 9.30 class. I thought maybe that would be, I'd move the students to somewhere else. They couldn't do it. So that, okay. Uh, it goes until 11.10, so my office hours go 11.15 till 12 o'clock. Not 12.15, 12 o'clock. Because I have my Cal 3 class starts at 12. It ends at 1.40, no, yeah, 1.40, then this one starts at 2. So I have another 20 minutes before this class, so if you want to see me, I usually will stay here in the classroom, I think, but like today, I tried to go back to my office just to finish lunch, but then I had a student needed a book, and then this and that and the other, and then the instructor needed to help you, so it was, I didn't get to finish lunch. But I at least got my apple anyway, okay, so I was running a little late. So that's my hours on, okay, that was the first part, 11.15 to 12, and then after this class is over with at 3.15, 3.15, and I may leave it at 4.45, I may move it to 5.15, I don't know. Uh, they have instituted some new rule this year that if you do an overload, you have to do extra hours. And I'm not doing an overload now, but in second mini term I will, and I do not want to come an extra nine hours a week, okay? <laughs> Is that, yeah, nine hours. So four and a half hours, two days. I don't want to come an extra nine hours a week. Uh, so I'm doing some of the hours first mini term, so I don't have to do them all second mini term. I don't know. It's crazy. Okay. So it will probably be 3.15 until 5.15 or something like that. Tuesday and Thursday. I know that. And these numbers aren't right. I have an 8 o'clock class and a 9.30 class. 9.30 class ends at 10.45, so 10.45 until 12.30, at least for the first mini term. 10.45, 10.45 to 12.30. Then, like I said, I have that mini term class, 12.30 until 5. So, at the end of the day, after 5, you can catch me for a little bit, no more than 15 minutes, but you can catch me then. I won't put it down, but you can catch me then. Now, when second mini term rolls around, my second mini term 
physical science class, can't start until 115 because there's a bunch of autom automotive students in that, and they don't end their session until they do block scheduling, they end at 1. So they, I give them 15 minutes to get from there to here. So then Tuesday and Thursday will be 1045 until 115. So a little bit longer office hours. But I'll also be here until 545 in the evening rather than 5. I'll leave probably somewhere around 6. All right. All those Monday through Thursday on the Bethlehem campus in room A265, you know where that is. Now, Fridays, I'm usually on the Birmingham campus. And approximately hours is 7.45 to 11.45. I'm almost always there past 11.45, but officially those will be my hours. Now, as I said, I'll find out again what the new number is. It's the 929 number, but it'll be something different from 3449. So I'll try to find that out this Friday and get that updated. Now, on the Birmingham campus, it's in the academic building, which is also building B, so it's B122. You know where Dr. Pruitt's office is. Okay, you go into that, Rose Sac Saxon's the secretary right there. Behind her desk is the copy room with a table and some file cabinets and stuff. That's where I should go on Fridays. And again, the new number's there, so I'll have to figure out what that is. So here's the course description. An introduction to numerical methods, qualitative behavior of first-order differential equations, Techniques for solving the separable and linear equations. So what I think I'll do, start doing this more, what I think I'll do is look at the table of contents while I read this course description. Okay? An introduction to numerical methods. Okay? That is begins in 2.6. Okay? So this isn't the order we're going to do it, but I'm just showing you how we cover. Qualitative behavior of first-order differential equations. So first-order differential equations. Yeah, chapter three, oh well, chapter two is first-order differential equations. So the whole chapter is dealing with that. Okay? Techniques for solving separable and linear equations analytically. Separable equations is 2.2, linear equations 2.3. Okay? Uh, applications of various models, and they mentioned population, motion, chemical mixtures, and stuff like that. Um, they going to uh, find where they first mentioned this. They do modeling almost throughout the thing, and I'm just trying to find where they first introduce it. Well, what we may do is make it a little bit in 1.3. Okay? Uh, chapter 1 is Introduction to Differential Equations. And actually, we do do a little in one in chapter one. I'll just incorporate that in chapter two as well. So we'll just quickly go over, mostly because chapter one's introduction to differential equations has definitions and terminology. We're going to be using the whole time, so we need that. Initial value problems, we use that throughout, and differential equations as mathematical models. That's going to be this part here. Okay. Whatever it is, I just had it. Oh, yeah, here, applications of various models. That's 1.3. Okay? Now, I'm not sure we'll do all those, but we'll do several. Techniques for solving higher order linear differential equations. Okay? Turn over to chapter 4, higher order differential equations. Okay? So we do a little bit in 1, chapter 2, chapter 4. Okay? Okay. Now, Power order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. That's 4.3. Undetermined coefficients, that's 4.4 and 4.5. Reduction of order, that's 4.2. So it's not in the same order, but they're all here. And method of variation of parameters. 
that's 4.6, okay? All right, with emphasis on interpreting the behavior of solutions, okay? And there's nothing that really says that, but we'll see graphs and things like this. In fact, every one of the graphs shows, shown here is indicating behavior of solutions. So the trouble is they don't have any PowerPoint here, so you have to look at your book. Okay. Uh, and applications to physical models whose governing equations are of higher order. And um, I think those models that they're talking about are basically things like the Cauchy-Euler equation, Green's function, and those kinds of things. Those are 4.7, 4.8, so, okay? It's a little hard to, to tie these directions, but it's pretty close. Okay, the Laplace transform, chapter 7. As a tool in the solution of initial value problems, um, well, they don't say that, but that's what it's doing, uh, whose inhomogeneous in terms are discontinuous, okay? They don't say that here, but the Laplace transforms is chapter 7. Now, last term, we didn't quite get to Laplace transforms. So, but let's just do a quick review. We're going to introduce a little bit in Chapter 1. We'll do Chapter 2, do Chapter 4, and then, if we have time, do Chapter 11. Okay? And that covers basically everything in here. Okay? Now, prerequisite, Math 227. You've had it last term, right? Oh, you're taking it this term? No. Yeah, you had it last term. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. All right. Co-requisite nine. The textbook, as I've been holding up here, I'll let you see it, is a first course in differential equations with modeling applications. It's the 10th edition, right there. The author is Dennis Z. G. Zill, okay? It's a Brooks Cole Cengage Learning text, and it's a 2013 uh, copyright, which means they're probably already coming out pretty soon with a new edition. So you may or may not be able to sell it back, but if we have enough on the shelf, we're going to use them as long as we can. Because nothing much changes. Graphic calculator is not required in the course, but you can do some of the pretty pictures like they show here if you have a graphing calculator. So that's up to you. If you already got one, fine. If you don't have one and want to get one, I put it as a required requirement for the course. That means Pell Grant will pay for it, okay, if they did it right. Okay, you'll need to bring paper. We'll be working every, maybe not so much today, but just about every day. Graph paper, if you need that to do your graphing, or you can just pick it off a line paper, I don't care. Pencils or pens, but when I do math, as I've told you before, I tend to make errors, so I prefer pencils for myself. I've been through the blackboard paragraph with you how many times, so you know that one, right? Okay, let's look at student learning outcomes. Ah, it does that basically every time. Okay, of course, student learning outcomes. Students will find solutions of first order differential equations, including separable equations and linear first order equations and applications with various models. Chapter two. We'll introduce it with a little bit of chapter one, nomenclature, and that kind of stuff. Number two, students will solve linear equations of higher order, including equations with constant coefficients, undetermined coefficients, also chapter the other. The other things that were mentioned, that's chapter four. Students will use Laplace transform methods to solve initial value problems with discontinuous functions. Not quite the right wording, but you know, that's the general idea. That's chapter seven. Students will use numerical methods to approximate solutions to systems. We do that kind of in several of the places. Um, chapter nine is uh, devoted to that. But let me just go back. Why did I put that in there? Um, I don't think. 
I think the only place it mentioned it was, no, that was models. Oh, an introduction to numerical methods. I think you have that in chapter one, so we're not probably even going to mess with chapter nine. If we have a chance, we'll do it. Okay? Uh, no, wait, I'm sorry, that's not numerical methods. Oh, numerical methods is 2.6, that's what it was. So I think we'll, I may change that when I update uh, and take that out because we're not, uh, we'll do that in 2.6 and that'll be enough of that. Okay, use numerical methods, methods to approximate solutions to the equations. Uh, if we have a chance, we'll do some in 9. I doubt if we'll get there. Students will write a research We'll research and write on a topic in differential equations. Plenty to choose from. You know this rule on that too, right? Then here are the competencies for the course. Uh, we'll do a little bit of one just for nomenclature. Combine that with two first order differential equations. We'll have a test that covers one and two. Then we'll do chapter four and have a test there. Chapter 7, hopefully we'll have time to do some in there. That may be our last test. I don't know if we'll go back and do Chapter 9. I doubt if we'll have time for that. Because this other stuff long in here, I think you'll see. But we may move along a little faster this time. The writing competency is your research paper, and then the overall competency is the final exam. Which will probably be your last chapter test. Which will combine everything we've done before, too. Okay. Just a moment, I'm going to I see Dr. Bryant in there, I want to. All right, so the research paper is required. It will count as a test grade that can't be dropped. And then there'll be a test after each unit, okay? Now, if we only have time for a test on chapter two and chapter four, research paper, chapter two, chapter four, chapter four will be the final. I can't drop the only other chapter test, we'll keep Three, okay. If we have a chance to do chapter seven, then I'll drop the lower one, which we do. But generally, I don't think we'll need those, but we'll see. Okay. The last test, which will be your last chapter test, may not be dropped. That's the final, and you have to take that. Each assessor is graded on a 100 point scale. Oh, and here's Jonathan. Good deal. Okay. Now, one guy is trying to do it remotely from Auburn, so we'll just have to see how he does with that. Okay. Then when I ever see together, I, I, Jonathan, I was just saying, the lowest unit test score says may be dropped, but if we only have the paper, one chapter test, and the final, I can't drop the only chapter test you have. If we have three Test and I'll drop one of the first two. Or if we only, term? huh? Yeah, the last term. Here's what happened. Uh, last term was really the first real class that I had, and it really wasn't very big. I don't remember now. Maybe three students, and quite often only one was there. Okay, uh, so it wasn't quite like a real class either. This is closer. At least I got two or three students. Uh, but anyway, uh, we only got two tests done. We didn't have a chance for chapter seven. So I really couldn't drop the test score because one was the midterm and one was the final. Now, if we can get three tests in, then I'll drop one of the first two. If, if you need it. Most of the time, you probably need it. But uh, even though I say here, the lowest unit test score may be dropped, not if we only have two tests. Okay, if it's just midterm and final, I got to keep Okay. But if we can get three tests in, then I'll drop one of the lower ones. Okay. The last test you take can't be dropped. The final exam may not be dropped, and we'll count as one test score. And see, last time that was a chapter four test, and so I couldn't drop. I only had one of the tests, so I couldn't drop it. Hopefully we'll do better this time. The grading scale, you know, A's or 90s or A's, 80s or B's, 70s or C's, don't go down here. It looks like you can't help but make a D or an F. Please withdraw. Don't make a D or an F. 
Uh, the reason I say that is withdrawal, even though it has financial aid application implications, a, a DNL has the same you know, implications, and they hurt your grade point average, whereas a withdrawal does not. Okay, but if you can't come, if you're going to get way behind, withdrawal don't mess up. Okay, now make up work. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I didn't ask you this. Uh, do y'all want to take home tests or in-class tests? Really? Wow, amazing. Okay, with take-home tests, how do we do make-up work? You just take it as your test, take them home and do them. Okay, but try to have them back within a week. <laughs> no, as soon as you can. Okay, I always like to give you at least a week so you have one day to ask questions on it and you always have a weekend. Okay, but if you need more time, I usually get more time. But I don't want you hanging on to the first test after I've given you the second test. You need to go on and get that first one done. Okay. Um, you, if we get enough tests done, you will be able to drop one with the paper in the final can't be done. We'll try to start class at 12, no, at 2 every day. I uh, was a little late today because I was trying to rearrange some classes and help another instructor and Friday to finish lunch, but I didn't get to finish. And I was a couple minutes late getting here, but I think I still beat Never mind, we were right at the same time. Okay, so try to get here every day, but if you can't, I understand that. All right. I think you've probably both heard, probably already this week, on harassment discrimination. Any questions on that? Because you've both been out of the classes of mine. Okay, Americans with Disabilities, I think you've heard that. Ad nauseum probably too, right? Any questions on that? Okay. And Janine McCoy Jones is the thing. I've got to change that for one of my others. And then the course calendar. This, of course, last fall, I'll put the same thing on for the spring. You can go to the academic calendar on their website and see every one of these dates. Okay. But I'll put them on here. I'll get it updated. Uh, I won't, well, here's why I'm not sure how far we're going to get this term. For some reason, the powers that be decided not to start class until Tuesday this week. Now, with the ice and stuff like this, it may have been a wise decision anyway, but guess what? We've had one class, Tuesday, Thursday classes. Tomorrow, we'll have their second class. Next week, guess what? Martin Luther King Day. Okay? So Tuesday, Thursday class, we'll have their third class. Then we'll have our fourth class, they'll, our second class, they'll have their fourth class on Thursday. They're already a week ahead of us. Okay? So we've just lost a week of class and a 16-week term. That's pretty significant. Okay? So we'll try to catch up as much as we can. One student in my early morning class said, can we make one of those up? I said, well, maybe we can. You really want to. <laughs> if y'all want to, we'll try to figure it out. Okay? All right. And then the last thing is, of course, once I get all the uh, corrections made to this, I'll put it out on Blackboard, and then you can either print this page, print your name, sign it, and date it, and give it to me, or you can extract this page and electronically type your name and date and email it to me. Either way you want to. I don't care. All right, that was a very quick and dirty syllabus. Understand everything? Or are there any questions? Okay. No, just the blueprint. What's that? Just the blueprint. This one right here. But yeah, you were in here when we did it. It's uh, first course in differential equations for the modeling applications by Dennis G. Zill. And it's out there. Well, I don't know when I'm going to have the YouTube set up because I've got to do all my class stuff first. Uh, but when I get that set up, you'll be able to see it off the syllabus. When I get the syllabus updated, you'll see it on the syllabus, so there's lots of places you'll be able to see it. On the book there, you can get the ISBN. <coughs> and a student in my 237 class, linear algebra, 
The book maybe is a little bit bigger than this, not much. I think he said it was around 250 bucks. So they're awfully expensive. Uh, I think Matt said that he rents his books always, so I think that would be probably a cheaper way to go. What's that? What's that? $40 a week. Oh, is it? Yeah. Second, man, that was my deal. That should be my deal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me mention. Any other questions about the syllabus? Okay. Through with the syllabus, I think maybe, period. Okay, until second mini term, anyway. All right. Y'all have heard about research paper instruction. We've been through it several times. Any questions on that? You choose your topic. If you notice when I was, and this is before you came in, when I was going through things, there were already several things that were done. Um, I mentioned Cauchy Euler equation. You could either write on who was Cauchy, who was Euler, or how did they or together develop this equation, what's its use. Green's function, who was Green, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Um, Laplace transform, who was Laplace, how did he develop the transforms, how do you use the transform, there's at least three different prop, uh, paper topics there. I briefly mentioned Euler method for numerical solutions, I already mentioned Euler, but how, do you, how did he develop this and uh, or applications of that, and I mentioned Runge Cutter, who was Runge, who was Cutter, and, you know, they both sound sort of like Indian names, I'm not sure if they are or not, but there's paper topics there. And that's just a few. I mean, your book is full of them, okay? And there's lots of applications. You may have some of your own. And you can use YouTube videos or other things. You can write on those. You know the drill. Any questions on that? What I'll do is... Oh, why is it not advancing? There we go. I just wanted to advance so someone looking at home could see the whole thing. Any questions? Got the paper down. Okay. Next thing we hit generally is safety. We've hit that in the previous classes, right? Oh, we didn't. Okay, yeah, so that's a good thing to hit now. All right. Fortunately, in the other classes, we will hit it again next week because those people aren't in this big class. Okay. But safety. Three areas of safety we have to be aware of. Okay. Can you think of what they might be? Say again. Okay. Weather. If you hear the alarms go off, okay, what do we do? What's the general procedure for the weather alarms? Go low, go interior. What's that? Yes, that's why I say interior, no windows. Exactly. Uh, walk far away from outside walls if you can. So what do we do? We leave this classroom here, go out into the hall, take the left, go down this half flight of stairs right here, go down, out, go down one full flight of stairs, go into the building, not out of the building, and right there in front of you are two restrooms. You're almost the lowest level in the building. Those restrooms are really two of the safest places you could be. Because the walls are close together, you have a lot of corners in there, that's where the strength is. It's interior and low. But generally, maybe not your favorite place to spend an hour or two. Okay, if you don't want to stay in there, what's another one? Well, if you go down a couple more steps, and right at the bottom of those steps is a little office here. It's the academic dean's office. Now, most of the time it's locked up because no one's over here. But if Dr. Davis or Dr. Pruitt, and occasionally Dr. Griggs comes over here, if any of them are here and they say you can come in, actually that would not be a bad place to spend the time. Okay? But of course, most of the time that's what's why. But if they don't invite you in, you know, then don't go in, you know. The next safest place is probably the hallway. Okay? Now you don't have any corners, because it's all pretty straight there. But it's still not a bad place to be. And for this reason, where the walls are close together, it's not a good place to be. But the advantage is you have emergency light. Because if we really do have a weather emergency, there's a pretty good chance the power will go off. And the power goes off.
house. There's no emergency lighting in the restroom that I know of. Not in the dean's office that I know of. There's a hallway next to it. So that will uh, probably make it a little more attractive to my position. Okay. Next to that, well, this is second floor. I'm talking about first. But next to that is a room 160. That's the developmental math classroom, the hallways classroom. It's not an ideal place because the middle of the room is not really great, but especially the interior wall, okay? That wall is soil against that. There's a very, a pretty strong structure there. The corners are quite strong. The one towards the hallway, that's okay because there's still several walls from the outside, so that's not bad. I wouldn't get in the middle of the room because if something happens upstairs, you could fall through. The wall is probably most of the okay? Now, in the hallway here is those glass doors to go into the library. If you need to go any further, if you go into the library area, immediately on your right is a uh, the computer room. Now, it's smaller than the classroom, so the walls are a little bit closer together, and you got the same corners you had in the classroom. So that's not a bad place to be. Just past that, there's another room I call the reference. That's where the atlases and globes and those kinds of things are. Now, the thing is, it's shelving in there, so you really can't get close to a corner. You can't get sort of close to a few of the walls, but you don't want the shelving falling on you, but it usually held up pretty well, or you don't want the books falling on you either. But, in a push come to shove, that would be an okay space. But I wouldn't go any further in the library than that, because then you're getting outside walls where there's windows, you don't want to be looking. Tornadoes tend to throw limbs around if they come into the window. The limb could hurt you, the glass could hurt you. So stay away from any exterior room, especially into the room. Stay on the interior. Okay. Now, the other thing, if that were to, the alarm goes off while we're in session, and let's just say just the three of us here, cause the, and maybe Matt, because uh, I doubt if Charles Jennings will be here very much. But if we do go down, stay together. Now, hopefully y'all are pretty healthy and will stay that way. But if one of you goes skiing and breaks a leg or something like that, then I'm going to be helping that person down. Uh, either to get to the lift, which is way around the other end of the building, and then i got to get you back to, to join the others. Uh, so I'll be late getting there. Don't drift off somewhere. Because once I get there, we have to call roll, account for everybody. If I can't account for you, then somebody's got to go back looking for you, risking their life or help, you know, doing so. So don't say, hey, I think I'm going to run home because it doesn't look like it's that close. Don't do it because you're putting someone, you're putting yourself at risk. The worst place to be in bad weather is on the road. Uh, and besides that, you're putting us at risk too because we're going to be trying to find you. Okay, so that's weather safety. Another kind of safety. Fire, fire safety, exactly. Now, let's start with the worst case scenario in my mind. What if the fire started in this room? What if we start seeing smoke coming out of the ventilation system? Or my computer blows up or, and you know, catches the desk on fire? What are some things that we need to do? If we are the first to detect the fire in this room, what do we do? Yes, and how do we do that? Okay, pull the fire alarm. Where's the closest fire alarm? Okay, now I want you to think here. This goes down to my office, up to the classroom. This is a long hallway that goes all the way to the end there. Takes a left and goes to the end down there. It makes a big horseshoe. This is the old part of the building. This building was built before fire alarms were required for safety. So therefore, there are no fire alarms anywhere on those old hallways here. So, this part over here is a little bit newer construction. That's a long way away. That's, I call it nursing homes. That's where a lot of nursing plants come from. They now have converted one of these to a student plant. But in here, they have what they call the student services room. That's the newest part of this building. And if you go out of here, down the half flight of stairs, don't take a left, go right past the restrooms and go to that corridor that goes across the natural aid right here, 
as soon as you enter that hallway through these doors right here, and there's a natural light in your head, I'll be, I think immediately on your left. There's a fire alarm. I think a little bit further up that way as well. I think the closest one is right about there. So on the first floor, if it's just the second floor, that third floor at the same level, uh, that would be the closest. So one of you goes down and, and, and sets off the fire alarm. What does someone else do? Be more confident than people do them with this all the class. Yeah, okay. Now, actually, I think a very good idea is if you got a cell phone, which I'm, I know you do, and you probably do too, is program into your cell phone Boston State Police. So you can just hit uh, them immediately and let them know fire in room 255, blah, 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 you know, or in the fan room next to smoke coming out of the ventilation duct. You know, let them know as much as possible. So one person calls, maybe the person going down to pull the alarm, but you know, I don't want you falling down the stairs because you're looking at the phone. But yeah, that. But one other thing, especially if it's in the room, my computer exploded or my book or the desk that came off. I, I can't imagine what could happen. What's another thing we need to do? The fire extinguisher. Where's the closest fire extinguisher? Right here, okay, right here, outside the door here, within five feet of where I'm standing right here, there it is, fire extinguisher, blackout. That fire extinguisher is good for electrical fires, wood or paper fires, even grease or oil fires. That's a good one. Water is not good on electrical or grease or oil. Electrical, it conducts electricity, you can get zapped, or on grease and oil, it spreads it, it doesn't put it out. It would only be good, so don't dump water on it, even though you may have a container of water on electrical or grease or oil. Okay, and then after we've done all that, we head down outside the building. Anytime, or if all we do is hear the alarm go off, and by the way, there will be a fire drill sometime this term. They started doing this every term now, which is a good idea. And the last time we did it, which is the first time we've done it in years, they told everybody to go out the same door, which is not what you're supposed to do. So I had my class go out the front door and say, now normally we go down there, but they want us back here or something in that way. But I said, you do not practice wrong behavior. It defeats the purpose of the drill. So here's where we are. Got to orient myself. That's the interstate. This is Bethany Super Highway. Okay. We're right here. In this part right here. It just doesn't look right, but that's right. That's, that's where we are. And what we do. No, we're not. We're here. That's the ladder we get started on that. Here we go. We're in this classroom right here. So here's the door we go out right here. And then we go out, we go down and go into that parking lot. Now, I think it would be adequate to just go about 75 yards into the grass here. And if it's a nice, pretty day and you want to lay in the grass, you know, I think that'd be all right. But they say go down to it. So let's go down to the parking lot, not get in the car and leave. They'll say, hey, it looks like the building's going to burn down. We're not going to have any more class today. And take out of here. You don't want to do that because we've got an account for you. Okay? They may say, oh, we can put this class in here, and this is C building and C building and Methyl Hall building. And the, uh, they may divide us up and send us to other buildings. So don't leave. But the more important reason for not leaving is that if we don't know that where you are, we assume you're back in the building. And then somebody has to go in and risk their life and health trying to find you. And you're not there anyway. Okay. So that's what we do in case of fire. Same way, go out, down, but rather than go interior, you go out and go to the parking lot. If it, it initiated here, we also call 911 or to Austin Police. We call, uh, do the fire extinguisher and fire alarm. Most of the time, it won't be here, it'll be somewhere else. Okay, third type of safety. Didn't used to ever even think about it, much less mention it. Recently, huh? Active shooter. Yes, exactly. 
Sorry we even have to mention it, but we do. Actually, I only know of one community college where it's happened, but it has happened at a community college. Uh, I've heard of several universities where they had had things, but well, like in the last year or two, there was one place in a community college had them. And there have been other places that had them too, so it happens, unfortunately. But uh, we do need to think about what to do. What do we do? Now, guess what? Y'all are better hearing than I have, okay? So guess what? You're probably going to hear it first. If you hear something that sounds like it could be gunfire, stop me. <laughs> Let me know. What do we do then? Yes, one of you get on the phone immediately, more than likely, unless it's somewhere really close, someone else is already called, but don't count on that. Dial 911 or you're immediately to the Boston Police. Actually, it's better to go to the Boston Police first. They can contact 911, but if you don't have their number, do 911. Okay? What next? Okay. One thing. Okay, we stay. We lock the doors now. I have it unlocked now, so people can come in now. So how do you lock it? Well, some doors have buttons here you can lock. This one doesn't. So I have to physically go outside with my little keys and my shaky hands and lock the door from the outside. Come back in and pull it through. So we're locked from the outside there. However, there's another room right next door. Now sometimes. They forget to unlock that one in the morning, so it stays locked all day. But you got to make sure it's closed. But then you got to make sure it's locked too. If it's unlocked, then you don't use the method. But you know, if it's, if it's locked, it's open, close it. So just in case, okay, this one's called the front. How about this door? It has buttons here. So what if I press this button? It's locked from here. But it's not locked from here because this is inside the office. It's locked people out of the office. Not, so this is counterproductive. It locks us into the room but will allow them to come in. So let's not do that. Okay? So leave this unlocked. Now this one has a deadbolt, but I don't have a key for it. So that won't do us any good. That door, however, Jennings, he's an Auburn student and he's trying to do it through the YouTube, you know, so good luck with that, but uh, hopefully he'll do okay with it. Okay, I think that's all the safety we need to do, so um, any other questions about anything in general? Okay, 
and boy, he was here early too because we've got another at least 14, 15 minutes before we leave and his class starts at five, uh, 3.30. Okay. All right. Oh, I forgot. No, I, I started this back then. Okay. Now, I mentioned about the book. Another negative thing about the book, there are no PowerPoints. So I'm going to have to write everything on the screen, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, now, why am I getting... Oh, I know. No, that's not it. Goodness gracious, I get away from here. Um, there it is. Okay. I just couldn't see it. I have to open a file to have it going on. And the file contains nothing but a blank page and a blank graph page. That's all. Okay. We won't be doing that many graphs, so we'll go back to this. Okay. Then we'll go to current slide. Okay. all the screen we get. Okay, as I said, we will start with chapter one. Chapter one is very short, so we don't have a test on one. We'll just do, I don't know, we'll think about it. If it's helpful to have the test, that might allow me to drop the Lewis test. So, um, These books these days, they have to do something to convince you they're more, worth more than what they used to be. So they have these little projects in here. Before you've ever had any differential equations, they start out with a project. But they're worth reading, and they're pretty good. So if you get your book, the first one it says for section 3.1, we're nowhere close to chapter 1. So why is this? Is, is AIDS an invariably fatal disease? And there's a nice little blurb here. And it shows a uh, cell infected with HIV, so lean sort of gruesome stuff. But anyway, certainly worth the read. And then they have related problems with that. Project for 3.2. So I wouldn't do it yet, but I mean, it's just interesting. Uh, uh, the Ali effect, that's not Muhammad Ali, but an A L L E E. Uh, and Again, pretty interesting to read, and, and there are uh, some names and stuff there, so you're certainly welcome to do that. 3.3, uh, Wolf Population Dynamics. Uh, again, interesting to read. Bungee Jumping, interesting to read. Uh, so why they have these here, why don't they put them in the chapters, I don't know. Uh, collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Now that is a fascinating thing. And it could have been solved and ahead of time and not happened if someone had done their differential equations correctly and done some modeling. Uh, but it was an amazing situation. They named it the Galloping Gertie. It was the state of Washington uh, across the Tacoma Narrows uh, and the bridge collapsed because the men set up a sympathetic motion, a resonant motion in the bridge apart. Murder uh, at the Mayfair Diner, that's sort of fun, but I mean, I don't know. Uh, earthquake shaking a multi story building, that's not too fun, but it can certainly be practical. Model, modeling arms races, what well, all sorts of weird things here. Uh, and finally, we get to chapter one. Okay. Chapter one is Introduction to Differential Equations. Okay? The words differential, that goes back to 
Cal one, right? You had derivatives, and then when you wrote them sort of not one over the other, you wrote them as differential points, which is how we integrate and that type of thing. So we're talking about equations that have differentials in them. You know, the, the differentials that we need. So let's look a little bit at the definitions of terminology. Okay? And I'll do a little bit of preliminary stuff. Uh, Whenever you write a derivative, you basically are writing a differential equation, really. Okay, Here's one, for instance. Let me get my color changed here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. dy dx, looks like a derivative to me, is equal to 0.2x times y. This is a derivative equal to some expression. That's a differential equation. Equation means it has to have an equal sign in it. <coughs> differential or derivative means either a derivative there or to write this as a differential, you could write this as dy is equal to 0.2xy dx. Okay? Now, if I wrote it that way, you can almost guess what we might do next. Say again? Okay, divide by what? No, actually divide by the y. Okay? And y'all are moving beyond what we need to be doing now. If you divide both sides by y, this thing gives you the y goes out, right? And you have dy over y is equal to 0.2x dx. And guess what you can do then? Integrate. You know what this is, don't you? Or do you? Okay. Antiderivative of 1 over y dy? Log y. Ln. Natural log of y. And this is, you can pull the point 2 on the outside, and the antiderivative of x is has it been that long? And square root over 2. Alright. Okay, you take the root of Yeah. Yeah, you've you done integrals before, right? And then, so what you have then is the natural log of y is equal to, I'm going to put the 0 0.2 on the outside, x squared over 2, right? If you move the integral here, okay? That would just be x squared over 2. And then you could divide this, it would be 0 0.1. So you have log y is equal to 0 0.1 x squared. Okay. Now, those are both indefinite integrals, so you really need a plus c, or some constant. You don't need two or three of them. One will do, okay? Uh, now, I sh we probably shouldn't have done that much, but that's okay. What they're going to say is, they say... Look at this. y is equal to e to the 0 0.1x squared. That's a solution to this differential equation. Well, how could you verify that? Well, if that's y, you need to know dy dx. So what is dy dx? That's the derivative of e to the 0.1x squared. Now we're taking a derivative of that one. What would that be? Okay, it would be e to the 0.1x squared. Sure enough, that's in there. But then you've got the chain rule, which would be 0.2x, right? 
take the derivative of this part. 2 times 0.1 is 0.2, and x n minus 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. Right? That's the chain rule. Okay? So this is saying this thing, 0.2x e to the 0.1x squared is equal to 0.2. That looks good. X, that looks good. Y, well, Y is e to the 0.1x squared. Yeah, those are the same. So that means that indeed is a solution to this. Now, it doesn't quite look like it, okay? Uh, and here's why it doesn't look like it. Because of that sorry points, the plus C. That's sort of messing things up. But you know, if we left off the plus C here, let's just do that for now. Let's just assume the C is equal to zero, which this would be in case of that. Then what we could do is take e to the both sides, right? e to the log y is equal to e to the 0.1x squared. Well, what's e to the log y? Exponentials and logarithms are inverse functions of each other. So e to the log y would just be y is equal to e to the 0.1x squared. That's exactly what we got here. Now, you have just solved the differential equation. We shouldn't have done that, okay? Because you didn't know we, we shouldn't be doing it yet, but you just did it. And we basically kind of supposed to have known every step of that. Now, what did we do to do that? We separated the variables. And what was one of the things that is coming up in chapter 2? Separation of variables, or separable variables. That is one of the first techniques that you'll approach for differential equations. Separation of variables. They get a lot harder after that, but that is the simplest first line of defense. That's what we would choose to do. But of course, that's not the only solution to it. And what we, because we really did need the C in there. So here's what we do. Rather than saying plus C, we would usually say plus log C. Okay? That's also a constant, right? And then go back and combine that with this one. And that would be log of Y. We can make that a plus or a minus. I'm going to move it to the other side but keep it a plus log C. And that would be C times uh, the log of C times Y. Because remember, the log, the sum of two logs is the, pro the log of their product. Remember that as a rule of logarithms? The log of AB is log A plus log B. That's how we used to do slide rules, okay? So... That's how we get. So really, the general solution to this would be uh, y is equal to, I'm going to write that, I've lost it now. Right here, here it is. Uh, Cy is equal to e to the this. So that's where your constant goes. Um, but don't worry about that yet. Okay. We weren't supposed to do that yet, but since it was such a simple problem, I thought we would. So, any equation in this form where you have a derivative somewhere in the equation and everything else is something else, that's a differential equation because it can be written as the equation of differentials. So, it's called a differential equation. Before proceeding any further, let's consider a more precise definition of the concept. So, let me erase the slide. Here's your definition. An equation okay, that's a Q there. An equation containing the derivatives okay, and it can be plural, derivatives of one or more
unknown functions. Okay, unknown functions or dependent variables. Okay. With respect, R S W R T is with respect to one or more independent variables. Okay. Is said to be a differential equation. Oh, I'm just sorry. Is a differential equation. Okay. From now on, DE means differential equation. So I don't have to write as much. Okay, question? Is it time? Oh, how sad. Okay, it is time. Okay. We didn't quite get... Oh, here it is. Okay. So we just got a definition. We're going to talk about ways to classify differential equations later. Okay. Um, three. Three. Huh? They're both three. Your calculus are all fours. That's yeah, that's why the, yeah, those classes go on. That may have been on the floor already. I think one of those. Is that yours or was that already here? Oh, it is yours. Okay. 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 Good deal. All right, we'll pick up from there next Wednesday. So have a good weekend, have a good holiday, and we'll see you next week. Okay. Okay. Hopefully I'll get some of the stuff out there.